Um, before we start, um, I'd just like to address the uh, safety concerns coming in. That's going to be a part of our meetings from now on, um, just to protect everyone's safety. Next is public hearings. Um, first one is to local law to amend 3 5 of the United City Code regarding the removal of shopping carts by the Supervisory of Public Works. And I don't know if anybody signed up for that. Mm -hmm. Motion to open that hearing. Motion. Second. Oh, there. Aye. 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 Um, no one signed up for that, so can I give a motion to close it? Motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Next public hearing is local law to amend the city charter and the city code regarding appointments by the mayor. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? There's no one signed up for that. So we'll move on. Motion. Motion to close. Motion. Sorry. All right, we're going to move on to old business. All in favor? Aye. Can we speak up? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to move on to old business. And before Mr. Hedgelon sits down, I might ask him to come up and talk about the city manager searching. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Life's tough. No. Oh. Good evening. I asked Mayor Rossi if he wanted a report from the city manager search committee. So. I drafted a report from the city manager search committee this afternoon. Um, we've had 20 applications. 11 of those we put into the inactive folder because on their face they did not meet the minimum requirements that are set forth in the charter. And <clears throat> the committee is very concerned about complying with the requirements that the charter sets forth. And I do have copies of this for everybody. <clears throat> Um, we've identified seven applicants that we would like to conduct preliminary interviews with. There are some applicants who <clears throat> we are going to ask for some additional information because what they submitted either didn't meet the specific requirements of a cover letter and <clears throat> uh, references, or we were uncertain about some of their uh, time frames for uh, experience and what their education consisted of. <clears throat> we are concerned about what we think is a fairly low number of applicants. And uh, at the end of May, we had asked to have a resolution put on the uh, first June meeting to extend the time for taking applications and to put some money, uh, approve some money for advertising on websites that are relatively specific for uh, municipal management kinds of positions that we had not been on because of the cost. <clears throat> so we would, uh, on behalf of the committee, although I didn't clear this with them, um, we would ask that the time period be extended and an allocation be made, transferring money from the current city manager budget line to uh, allow for some advertising. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've had, we had an extensive discussion relating to the provision in the charter that talks about a business or public administration, public management bachelor's degree, or a similar, a substantially similar type of degree. And <clears throat> that is a provision in the charter. It's a statute. It requires, you know, it should be strictly complied with. But what exactly does that mean? So we, we went over it. We've discussed it in some detail. And um, I think we came to the conclusion, and, and I, I did not uh, over this report with the members of the committee. I did distribute a couple copies, and I will ask uh, Mr. Loretti and the other members of the committee who are here 
to correct me if I misstate or overstate anything, or if they have any other comments, I would ask the mayor and the council to consider letting them chime in. But <clears throat> reviewing the coursework for a bachelor's degree in public administration or business management, for the most part, in my opinion, people who do get a, who major in business or public administration at the bachelor's level spend most of their course time in either what I would call a core of, of courses or you know, sort of general studies, English, statistics, economics, math, writing, a lot of writing. Writing is really critical. Reading and writing it seems to be really critical. Method, principles and methods of statistics. 75% of the coursework at the Whitman School of Business at Syracuse University, fairly responsible, reliable place, 75% are not management courses. And it varies from place to place. So um, typically, the man technical management part would be 15 to 30 credit hours. That's five to 10 courses, if they're three, three hour credit courses. I think the committee would agree that, that the conclusion was that the actual courses taken are more, in earning a bachelor's degree, are more important than the name of the major associated with it. So uh, we looked, we, there were some candidates who were a little uncertain about what their, what their bachelor's degree really covers. And does it, you know, do they have enough coursework similar to what a technical bachelor's in public administration or management, business management would, would cover? So we are asking several of those candidates to provide us with information about their coursework. So as I said, I prepared this this afternoon. Mr. Loretti, the other members of the committee have not seen it. Um, if I have misstated or overstated or there's additional comments, I would ask that you, you know, give them a chance to say something. Absolutely. So I have copies, so, and one for the clerk. So I'll give it to Mr. Winchell and ask that he... Move it along. Or just to, to, may I, Chairman? Um, just, just to sort of uh, back up uh, um, the Chairman on this, so you'll notice that I believe item number six on the agenda ref refers to the monies in <coughs> the time uh, being allocated, requested. So, uh, and I can tell you that the spirit, although we haven't seen a final report, everybody has been at the meetings of the search committee. and. We figured that it's, you know, we need to start things going because of the public appetite to get something going. So, but there is a need to cast the net farther. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Chairman. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else for old business? I will. Um, yeah. Um, I kind of want a status or update on Madison Street. What are we going to do with uh, Madison Street? I think that's kind of been on the table, or been put on the back burner, I should say, for a while now. Uh, my understanding is it's not being sold. Um, so I just kind of we need to do something with that, either take action or something. What, what, what are we talking about on Madison? The Madison. The, the, um, Number the one that's uh, fell out is falling down in Madison Street. Chief, Chief, Chief. So 136 was brought, Madison Street was brought to council, um, I believe in February time frame. Um, council decided that it was a public nuisance, it was unsafe, um, it needed to be repaired or taken down. Um, that's where it stands at this point. So it, um, it's essentially up to the council of which way you want to spend the money to um, because the property owner is not able to do it himself so it's going to fall on the city on what what you want to do with it um, to either put it out to bid to repair the building or have it torn down um, but it is still an unsafe structure um, in whatever direction you do decide it is going to have implications on 138 Madison Street as well because they are joint. So that's where we stand right now. 
Thank you. I feel we need to take some kind of an action. I don't know what <clears throat> we should go yet, but it's decisions we've got to make, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it feasible to chief any idea would it be recommended to have somebody refurbished it or is it refurbishable i guess if i have to say um i can provide you with the engineer's reports again um but it wasn't very severe um deteriorate, deteriorated condition um so finding somebody uh the rear I guess, southwest wall is the worst portion of it that it's going to be very hard to find somebody that could be able to shore that up while they do the work to repair the bill. Um, What's your recommendation? Um, I'm not a structural engineer, okay. but Fair enough. the condition of the building, I don't, in my opinion, I don't see how we can leave for a bit in the state it's in. No. Thank you. <coughs> How would that work even if we did refurbish it? Yes. Do, you, do you bill the owner? Or do we take it over? How did, I guess how would that work? I've done that before. I have not looked at the code on that one. I know generally the demolition aspect of how you do things. I have not looked at the city charge or anything on refurbish. So. We would have to look at that and get back to the Bronx Council. Maybe. So we can have some update by next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is this building still occupied? Yeah. No. The building next to it is 138 is, but <coughs> 136 itself is not. I, I believe it's going to follow the same avenue that 238 Allen Park would. If, if you deem the work in the city um, basically funds the work to refurb it, it's gonna go back on the you know tax assessment of the building and then the, the city recoups it in that avenue. But um, I don't know it's gonna be a major uptaking to bring it back to you know proper standards I guess. Potentially you mean that it's still standard potentially if if we take the route of demolition instead of being in a position where we have to treat it as friable, could have a survey done, possibly do a pavement, and lessen the cost in that sense. But uh, the abatement, the cost of the abatement versus doing a, a friable, would that, what's if the, what's the a, difference? If it was abated, then the debris could just go up here mass. Correct, mass well, what, what, I guess. It would be a cost, we'd have to look at That's cost. what I'm saying, yeah. what would it cost to abate it versus Take it for without having a survey done. Where right now, right? Right. But one, it, normally we're in a position that we have already taken it down. And we don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. If we take the route of demolition, we may have the option of working at doing an abatement. We should do something before it falls down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that actually, especially before winter, because we get a snow load on there, right. it's probably going to come down. Right. So, can we address that next meeting? Give us some answers, maybe? Yeah, let's talk about it. Okay. Yeah. I'd just like to take a minute. Uh, the city held their annual um, fishing derby this past Saturday, and I'd just like to publicly thank uh, both the police and fire departments, uh, members from both departments that were off duty, both uh, did, uh, donated their time to be there and uh, help the kids, and it was a great turnout. Uh, we had over 50 kids between two different groups, lots of fish were caught, kids had a great time, and you know, huge thanks goes to both uh, the fire and police departments, so thank you both. We're going to move into reports. Um, we have a report today, so we're going to go into the supervisors. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to announce that we have new leadership on the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Jim Cunningham from Nelson is replacing John Pinar from Lennox. And as far as sales tax revenue, we are up 1.5% above this 
um, time last year, so that's positive. Um, and that's it. You girls have anything else? And so pretty quiet. Yeah. Pretty quiet, yeah. Um, and with that leadership change, I'm hoping that our roles, uh, Michelle, Brandy, and my roles stay the same for our committee assignments. But well. they did. They came out this afternoon. Okay. She Good. emailed them at about four o'clock. Perfect. Everything's the same. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, acting to the menu. I'd like to introduce the gentleman to my left, the new comptroller for the city of Oneida, named Ben Gasser. He's got a bachelor's degree in accounting from SUNY IT. He comes to us from the banking world, and since 2008, he's been the bookkeeper slash comptroller for the town of Vienna, which he will continue in that role. It's a part-time role, so he will still be babysitting Vienna. How he takes care of us here in Oneida. Um, I got one other thing, it's a resolution on here, but I think I just need to put this out there. Since 2006, this community has been talking about that dam up in Tabor, New York, and it finally looks like it's gonna get put up in it. Uh, it should be a, uh, a massive project and undertaking, and I'll have plenty of pictures and everything to share because it's going to be massive yeah. it's a huge huge exciting project yeah. all right can you approval of minutes for june 4th motion second any discussion all in favor all right. Aye. no changes motions pass can I get the approval of warrant number 12? Resolved that warrant number 12 checks the ACH payments of the amount of 368,000, $335.92 as audited by the voucher committee. I hereby approve for payment in the usual manner at the discretion of the controller. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's and abstentions? Motion is passed. We'll now I'll turn the meeting over to our city clerk, Sam. Item number one, monthly reports. Receive and place on file the monthly reports from the city clerk, city engineer, post department, fire department, parks and recreation department, and police department. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's and abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number two, advertise for bids. Authorize the purchasing agent to advertise for bids for Glenmore Dam improvements. Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's, any abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number three, 2023 audited financial statements. Receive and place on file the 2023 audited financial statements from Bond Neo and Co. Company LLP. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's and abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number four, reintroduce local law. Reintroduce a local law to amend Chapter 17, Section 17-1 of the Code of the City of Oneida and to establish a new chapter regulating the harboring of pens within the city of Oneida inside district and schedule a public hearing for Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. 109 North Main Street. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's and abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number five, agreement. Authorize the acting city manager to sign an agreement with the town of Vernon to perform certain services for the Vernon Center Water District in operation and maintenance of its water system for a period of one year from the start up of the water system, which is a date to be determined. Motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any no's and abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number six, city manager search committee. Approve a deadline extension to July 1st, 2024 to accept applications for the position of city manager and to authorize the comptroller to allocate $2,500 for advertising of said position. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's, any abstentions? 
motion is passed. Item number seven, Oneida Rail Trail. Authorize the Director of Parks and Recreation to proceed with Capital Project 24-11, Oneida Rail Trail Improvements. Motion. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's and abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number eight, forestry contracts. Authorize the acting city manager to sign any and all documents for services retained in connection with the forestry management plan. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's and abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number nine, approved bid. Approve the lowest bid meeting specifications for liquid caustic soda to surpass chemical company <clears throat> One two five four Broadway, Albany, New York. One two two zero four. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's and abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number ten: budget transfers and amendments. Approve the budget transfers and amendments as outlined by the comptroller. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's, any abstentions? Motion is passed. Item number 11, agreement. Authorize the acting city manager to sign an agreement with Christy Zupan, 7171 Old County Road, Canastota, for certification classes for lifeguarding to the public at the Chapman Pool during the months of June, July, and August of 2024. Motion. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's, any abstentions? Motion's passed. Any new business from council? We'll go into public comment then. We have one person signed up, and that is Melissa Maddox. So I live at 341 Stone, 345 and 347 Stone. It's like a double house. Um, it has now, I guess, fallen upon the city. Um, the DPW came over and uh, mowed the front lawn, and thankfully we were home that morning because we were about ready to run out and tell them don't mow the back. Um, but yesterday we got the privilege to meet um, Paul Ward. He is phenomenal. He is super sweet, very nice gentleman. Um, he they were out at seven o'clock in the morning, ready to mow again. He started down the back with his weed whacker, and I said it ran out, and I caught him off guard and scared him, but <laughs> apologize for that. Um, and I said to him, I said, before you guys do anything in the back, I said, do you have a minute? He's like, yeah, let me, let me know what's going on. So we walked out back together. The previous owners had a ton of wire fencing and all kinds of other garbage. And then the weeds have grown up. So he took time to go back there with me. And I told him what I knew was back there. Um, I knew there was like a rock garden and stuff. And I said, I just didn't want you to take your zero turn mower back here and get it destroyed. So he thanked me for taking the time to do that. But he said also, you know, he's like, I'll get back here, you know, as soon as we can to get this cleaned up. They were back within hours. Like, it was amazing. They weed whacked the daylights out of the backyard. They pulled all the garbage out of there that they could. Um, but I just wanted you guys to know that, you know, I appreciate him taking time. He was a genuine, nice guy. And, um, you know, he really works hard for the city. So I wanted you guys to, to know that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I a motion to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter in the fire department, the police department we might actually take in and discuss some employment of a particular person in the fire department we might actually take. Motion. Okay. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you.